Chelsea won, Liverpool won. It's gonna be an exaggeration to say we got our Chelsea back, but I'm going to say Maurizio Pochettino, thank you very much. Chelsea today were a team with passion, charisma, characteristics that I love to associate with my Chelsea team. We've drew with Liverpool, Chelsea won, Liverpool nil, but we've got so much to talk about. The good, the bad, and the downright ugly from this game will be broken down. It will take around about 15 minutes. You will enjoy it because today, my boys, Chelsea did us proud. We are en route to make this year minimum top four and have a good team and build something for crying out loud. It's something we couldn't have said last year. 12th place was pathetic last year. This year, this Chelsea team already has showed me more than I've seen all through last year. Let's get into it. The good, the bad, and the downright. Up. Welcome to the Graf Guys View. We're gonna skip all the rituals. All I wanna say is, can you hit the like button so we get to a thousand likes? Subscribe to the channel because it's a great way for us to get to 30K and it means a lot. It shows you guys actually care and you will see the content when it comes out. And now let's get into the team news. Team news came out and I really was upset. And the reason I was upset was really obvious, right? We haven't seen three at the back. I felt like we were going really negative. And initially, until Pochettino adjusted it, my concerns were coming to fruition. De Sassi looked very shaky. Thiago Silva looked shaky. Colwell was getting cooked left, right, and center until he woke up and told Salah, you know what? Actually, I'm going to defend now. Uh, but yet, it wasn't because we were bad. It's because at this moment in time, they just a good team. They've got so many experienced players and you could see the midfield of Connor and Enzo was shaky in the beginning, but it really grew into the game, especially Enzo Fernandez. What a player. Ben Chilwell and Reese James, we're gonna cover everything. So now let's just get into it. What I love to see today was Pochettino absolutely tinkering. And when I say tinkering, I mean, we had a manager that was willing to try something. He said it openly, publicly on an NBC forecast before the game. He said, look, with the missing unit of Nkunku, we had to adjust. We needed to bring an extra defender in. We had to do something different this game, but we have to have the key principles. And that for me was marvelous because we prayed, we battled, and we weathered a storm. Guys, the first 15 minutes was a little bit shaky. We had chances, they had chances. 15 to 30, they cooked us. Full-fledged cooking. They had oil there, they had some palm oil, there they had butter everything gas heated up and we were literally at the mercy of VAR it goes down to though I think it's a completely different performance from there and you know what we showed battle we showed hunger we showed character and this team reacted for 30 to 45 Pochettino's team was there I could see what he wants to see. It was evident in every single way. We were winning second balls, we were dictating the ball, we were consistently switching the bet play, whether it was to Ben or Reese. There were patterns of play. We were getting in behind, we were creating chances, and it was marvelous to see. Honestly, the character was amazing. What I loved today was as well, the plan worked. The wing backs were causing all sorts of problems. Whether it was Reese James linking up with one twos with Raheem Sterling in the first half, or in the set, like, or linking up with Enzo Fernandez, Reese was causing all sorts of problems. Every single way you want to see Reese cause a problem, he did. He was literally delivering excellent ball. Jackson should have scored, in my opinion. That cutback for him was absolutely beautiful. But don't worry, Jackson will come good. Jackson today showed me so much promise. We'll talk about him a bit later. Ben Chilwell on the other side had a very good goal, goal disallowed. He was literally an inch offside. I call him Basic Ben because you know what you get from Basic Ben? You get good effort, you get running around, you get good finishing. It's the tangibles, the stuff that, you know, you have to be a player to have. <coughs> and he lacks it, I'm sorry about that. He really lacks it. His first touch, his ability to play in tight areas, but the other stuff he's got in an abundance. And this is where we need to really decide in the future whether Ben is the long-term solution. At the moment, we can depend on him. At the moment, I can live with him. Then we need to talk about Sterling in the first half. Sterling was causing all sorts of problems. Sterling was picking up the ball in pockets, linking up Ruiz James, beautiful threaded passes, running in behind, stretching him, but he faded out of the game. I'm not gonna say he had a great game, but I think he had a decent game, and in other games, he gets a few goals, purely based on movement, and we camped the, the, the box in, and we literally, with his movement, he's gonna get chances. 
Enzo was mad at him. Enzo today was mad at the match. The second half, that performance, if that was KDB, people would be talking miracles about it. He didn't get a GNA, so no one's gonna really m mention it. However, the tidy feet. He carried Conor Gallagher in that second half. Coming deep, picks up the ball, sprays it. Coming forward, it picks up the ball, beats a man off the press, in behind, passing the ball at will. Left foot, right foot, doesn't matter. The only thing with Enzo is, he needs to unlock that software package, you know? Then once installation, update, so a little bit of GNA, mate. He went through in the first half, in behind, I think it was six minutes in, and he just took too long. Never did I think he was gonna score. Never did I think he was gonna score. The point of pass though, beautiful. Absolutely phenomenal. And Chelsea came to a 1-1, corner kick from him, headed out, comes back to him, crosses it again, Menchua heads it across the goal, and the Sassi's there, he, he makes up for his mistake, gets a good goal. And for me, at this moment in time, I was like, we can go on and win this game. And what else I like to see today was Nicholas Jackson. We actually have a number nine. We actually have an individual that's ready to run around, an individual that's gonna get stuck in, but he's just more than that. He really is more than that. Whether it's link up play, and we saw, right, what he was doing to Konate and Virgil van Dijk. Two monsters, absolute monsters. And in my opinion, Nicholas Jackson held his own. Like, he had a good opportunity he missed. He had one where he scuffed it and he hit the back heel of Virgil and it should have been a corner. Yet in the second half, carried the ball well, he led the line, and at the end, I'm not gonna lie to you, Mudrik went around the keeper. Mudrik should have tried to slot it first time, you know, just toe poke it past uh, Allison. But the way he can accelerate past people is absolutely crazy. And he's going to get better, by the way. You get a little bit of quality in and around him, he's going to get even better. I can't wait to see what he develops in. We are gonna get goals from him this year. It's who else can chip in and help him. He'll get you 12 to 15, 12 to 17 league goals this year. Just help. Someone needs to help him. Carney Chukameka, I thought he had a decent game today, you know. He grew into his ability to receive the ball in tight areas, his ability to link up the play, his ability to get the ball and someone's on him, swivel, and he's already at their back line. Honestly, Carney had a good game. Carney is not ready to start for Chelsea Football Club, but Carney is ready to contribute. And when I say contribute, I mean minutes here and there, starting the odd game, being, having the ability of training in this system, developing at Chelsea, no need to send him on loan, and then he comes back and you have to reintegrate him. No, he's ready to be that backup to the number 10. He's ready, trust him. And Kunku's injury has thrown a cool curveball in there because that would have been in Kunku. And then that would have given us a nice little solution. But it didn't work out. Gusto came on for Chilwell, uh, for Rhys James. Rhys James didn't look injured to me. This looks precautionary. It looks literally like we don't want to rush Rhys to 60 minutes. He was phenomenal. Gusto's defensively on point. Matson came on, uh, Ogachokwa came on. We, had, we saw a little bit of Mudrik. But overall, I thought Conor Gallagher, by the way, I'm gonna give him a little bit of credit. Some of the tackles, the guy plays like he's one of us. I mean that respect, runs like he's one of us. He runs like he's a Chelsea fan. He, he means a lot to him, by the way, you know? Thiago Silva as well, good defensive performance. Levi Kowal grew into the game and so did the Sassy in the second half. But now let's get into the bad because there were some things to talk about. Some of you are gonna say, Alex, you're being critical, but you need to understand, right? We're of the mindset that we want a title win inside. This isn't a title win inside. This is a side that's got trying to develop into one. So we need to talk about what we saw that was bad. The first goal, the sassy needs to improve. He fell asleep. If you're paying that back three, Reese lets him go. It's your job, big man. I'm sorry, like it has to be his job. I, people are telling me Reese shouldn't let him go. Reese is the wing back. Diaz is gone. You see him, he's in his peripheral vision. He just reacts too slow. Really lethargic, really nonchalant. Great pass from Mo Salah, don't get me wrong, right? Phenomenal pass. However, I need the Sassy to recover. The Sassy done really well afterwards, I'm not gonna lie to you, like really well in the second half, moving the ball. But in the first half, everything looks like a second slow. Everything looks like, what am I doing? Um, and what am I gonna do? Before he receives it, he needs to switch on. If he switches on, we could have a potentially good player, but it's a welcome to the Prem game. Like literally, first game in the Premier League, Salah, Jota, Gakpo, and Luis Diaz. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. Like it's literally that. And at the end of the day, I think he done okay. Not terrible, not great at all. 
Then we need to talk about Ben Chilwell's touches. How many touches did this man need? The ball was coming out to him, and I, you know what? I really feel harsh at picking him, but I just think he gets himself in such good positions. Ben, please take a good touch. There was one where I don't know who gave it to him. I think it was Enzo Akani. They opened him up, and he takes a beautiful, like, poor touch. And that poor touch pushes him away from goal. He takes a nice touch. He's getting a strike away. And I back Ben Chilwell when he takes strikes. Ben Chilwell can shoot. That touch was poor. Conor Gallagher. Conor Gallagher is the guy who is just a walking calamity playing out the back. He is not designed to be a Chelsea level footballer. He's a Chelsea level athlete. He is one of the best athletes I've ever seen at Stamford Bridge. The way every blade of grass he covers, every physical 50-50, he can win. Like, there is nobody you can put him up against and I'm like, you know what? Conor can't handle his own physically. No, there, that's not possible. On the ball, technically, horrible. Absolutely horrible, and I'm not being harsh. Enzo got tired of him at the end of that game. Enzo was trying to pick the ball up. He just, he doesn't have it in him to receive the ball on a half turn and beat a man off a press. He doesn't have it in him to play a ball first time. Everything's backwards, everything's sideways, everything's shaky. He's worried on the ball. And when you play in a double pivot, big man, I know you're just filling in there, but honestly, I would have rather played Andre Santos. I would have rather played Ogwachok because they can do that role to a better level. They're more proficient at the role. He played due to his athleticism, and sadly, that's it. Sterling as well. Sterling had numerous opportunities in this game. Take your man on, take Robertson on. Didn't do it. Like, I don't know what's going on with Sterling because I genuinely think he had a decent game, but it's just the final third, I need to see more. That second half, he gets Robertson one-on-one, -on -one, doesn't want to take him on. He, he's just very indecisive. You know, and I'm, th I'm thinking, if this is Noni, Noni's taking him on. And I need to see a little bit more of Noni, by the way. Like, Noni instead of Sterling in this team, and we've got more penetration, we've got no more aggression, we've got more of a threat. Yes, Sterling can get you goals with his movement and his ability to not be at the right place at the right time. But I also need to see a little bit more ingenuity. And we're not getting that from Raheem Sterling. I just feel like he's very topsy-turvy and he's going to get on a lot of fans' nerves. Like, he needs to be a little bit better. That's just my personal bad takes from this game. I never want to see that little spell that we had where that 15 to 30 minute spell. We looked horrible in every which way. I know this is a young team and I know Poch feels like he needs to shoehorn um, experience into it. But that was absolutely collapsed. It was shook the way we approached it. We were petrified of Liverpool and we shouldn't be. We're just as good as them. We showed that today. And you know what? The next five games are nice games. We need to pick up points and we need to rack up these points, five wins from the next one. And then all of a sudden you look back at this point and you're like, you know what? That's a great point. It's five wins, one draw, phenomenal. This is a good start, but that little spell was ugly. I could not, like literally, when Salah scored, I was like, oh no, not this again. And don't worry, Salah's goal was not counted purely because we got lucky. However, we scored and they got lucky, so at the, at the end of the day, it evened out 1-1. One, one. But that 2-0 could have caused a lot of problems and a lot of us would have been moaning differently right about now. But guys, this was the Gaff Guys View. I'm gonna be positive. I don't wanna like rant and rave about going too high on this performance, but at the same time, I don't wanna be too low because this is a great point. You give me a point before the game, I've taken it. Like this is, a, this is how low my levels have like literally lasted. But the performance today was better. I really enjoyed it. I do think we need a new goalkeeper, can't lie to you. I also, think we need a little bit more innovation on the right and left hand side of the wings but otherwise I think Mikhailo can grow into it I think Noni's gonna be fine add me a little bit of kudos and Kunku comes back life will be good but guys this was the Guff guys you hit the like button subscribe to the channel we're on the road to 30,000 subs can we hear it today we're like 200 away I really appreciate it hit the like button subscribe to the channel 